Hey everybody, welcome back to another round frog table. Everybody knows each other here, but uh, we'll do a quick introduction with everybody in case this is your first time watching us. I'm Brent, I'm uh, the host of Smellitude of Prague. I do the occasional review and I have a radio show, which I should actually put in the links on my uh, YouTube channel sometime. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> anybody can go. Hi, I'm, I'm Lao Shou. Um, I do album reviews and uh, occasionally just other themed videos on my review and vlogs YouTube channel. Um, I'm a former writer for Ultimate Guitar. That's pretty much all you need to know. <laughs> Ian? Oh, golly, yes. Um, hello, yes, I am Ian. As Brett and has uh, elegantly pointed out, I work for, well, I work, I run a very small YouTube channel at the moment called uh, Rhyme Signatures, which I have a little passion project of mine, very much having a great time with it, where I basically just go off and run my mouth off about everything. I just don't ever stop talking, ever, <laughs> ever. <laughs> my videos just keep going. You think, oh, he's done. No, he's not done. He's still going. He just doesn't stop talking ever. And very much is the same in, like everything that I'm ever involved in, because I'm a gabber, you know. Um, but yeah. I just love music. I really, really do love it. Um, I love talking about it. I love talking everything to do with music, reviewing it, just talking, looking at things which used to come out. I'm just obsessed, you know, and I like to think that obsession sometimes does come through well in my videos and I have a great time with it. So yeah, that's me. Rhyme signatures. Boom. All right, Mike. Uh, hello. Um, I'm from Notes Reviews. Um, I do videos there. Um, yeah, I upload as often as I can, mainly focusing on prog and metal. I have now three podcasts that I publish pretty regularly. I've got Quid Pro Quo with Matt. You just had your episode on this past Friday uh, for Quid Pro Quo. Um, I've got um, The Metalhead, which is a meditative podcast about metal music. Um, and I just uploaded a... Um, more of a copyright um, library style podcast called the IP address. And the first episode is out where we talk about free speech in public libraries. So yeah, that's, that's about me. I listened to way too much prog metal. Um, and I think I was one of the first on the scene in terms of like YouTube pro uh, prog stuff. I think it was just like me. There was a guy called moon tube. There was Darren Locke and there was like maybe one or two other people, but that's about it. You know, that's, that's 2014. Me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> way, way back in the day. Um, so yeah, that's me. That's you. I, I am uh, Matt O'Leary. And I have a channel called Matt O'Leary Music because I keep it simple and cover prog, cover kind of alt, prog, indie, all sorts of different things. Um, lots of modern stuff. And I've been at this for a little while, but I left for a few years and then came back this year. Um, so started way back when Notes was, was jamming in 2015-ish something like mm -hmm. that something like that and we did a lot of cool collabs um thinking back like uh i think your favorite album of the year we reviewed together yes yeah um perfect beings their first album there was that one and then i think we did thank you scientist yes uh, um terraformer, oh, terraformer. yeah yeah yeah. Uh, so we yeah yeah we uh covered rush's hemispheres Oh, that's right day. we did <laughs> yeah and we had a live stream with tiktok from gazpacho oh oh that's a deep cut that's a deep cut <laughs> yeah. yeah i think <laughs> <laughs> and that's me awesome and finally nathan yes i'm nathan i run a channel called nathan on shuffle and like a lot of the other channels here uh just focused on music focused on Prog mainly, do a bunch of album reviews. I do a weekly uh, news feature about all the latest in the prog world in the news perspective. And then I do a lot of shows with my wife where we do a bit of the reaction kind of thing. And it's her first time being introduced to prog music. So a little variety there, but it's all pretty much prog focused on my channel. 
love the videos of Jaina. They're so good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll have to have her on the. On the <laughs> oh my god, that'd be so good. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, she would do it. I think yeah. it would be. Cool. <laughs> So tonight, Nathan came up with the topic of uh, maybe briefly explaining to us all how we um, review music and what our steps and how we go about that are. So, Nathan, do you want to go first and kind of tell us how you do your gig? Yeah, sure. <laughs> you know what else so, yeah. Yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> So my process basically is I'm always on the hunt for like new albums to check out. You know, I, I subscribe to a lot of different pages and a lot of different websites and of course subscribe to all the YouTube channels mentioned here and, and hear about albums that way. And so uh, basically when I hear about an album that I think I might enjoy, I put it in basically a, a playlist of sorts that I have that's just kind of a running list of all these albums that I'm meaning to listen to and basically just step by step go through them kind of decide on a first listen if this is one I want to continue with and consider for a review or if it's kind of not my thing and maybe I'll skip skip it or put it to the side and revisit it if it's something that maybe I'll gravitate towards later and then basically just I I do most of my listening on my commute uh, basically, because that's one of the main times I have to myself to just listen. And so I just start playing through that playlist and and get myself familiar with the music. And then I have a few set times throughout the week, like in the evenings where I'm just, I just want to sit and just focus on the music. I write some notes uh, about the album as I'm listening to it. And then basically when I feel like I've heard it enough and have enough familiarity with it, that's when I uh, basically schedule in my schedule for a review and then for me i i have some notes some brief outlines and things that i have but i don't really write out a full script i just kind of do off the top of my head but utilize my notes to kind of guide and direct me through my review and you know that's that's the basic process that i go through essentially do you have some amazing car speakers (laughs) well (laughs) they sound pretty good they're not anything like fancy or any specialty speakers but yeah. it does the job you know basically. like when you got like a guy who like comes up like next to you at the lights and you can just hear like something boom 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 you oh, just yeah. got nathan the there instead windows are vibrating. <laughs> nathan just rolls up and he's just like she cried to me said the queen of maybe <laughs> and everyone's just like oh boy that's probably true. I probably listen a little too loud, too, <laughs> too much. One day, one day, I will be the happiest person in the world when I'm just walking through my city and somebody will pull up to the lights and like thick as a brick is blaring out of the speakers yeah. instead of something else. I'll be like, yes, my people, let's go. Yeah, yeah symphonic grog doesn't like lend itself to that <laughs> setup Not very quite. well. Yeah. Yeah. And you got to have like the deep sub going. Yeah. I often think to myself, like, I'm probably the only person anywhere near me that's listening to this album right now <laughs> but that's yeah. cool i think i think i've been the only person in my town to uh drive down the street windows down blaring yes or gojira mm-hmm. you know yeah, either right. or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's nathan do you have um do you have some sources that you go to regularly for new releases like just lists and things or do you just sort of glean from other reviewers and um a few yeah, it's, record labels or anything like that it's a variety of different things i there's a bunch of websites that i like to go to i go up frequently to Prague archives and check out their yeah. like ranking list to see what's ranking high in their list for the year so far and uh i like a website called Prague space i think it's called that they list a lot of new releases each week that are usually pretty interesting sometimes more on the heavier than for me but a lot of people here would probably love a lot of their suggestions and yeah just different groups on facebook and you know different forums and things that i go to used to go old school to the like mike portnoy forum oh my I, god that was the thing <laughs> that's uh, going back a bit oh, oh, I, miss, I miss bulletin board forums mm, yeah <laughs> Was there one called Ears or News or something that was prog related? I know there was, but I can't remember what it was called. 
there's like a progressive ears i think yeah that i think that's the one right? yeah. it used to be really yeah. good This Prague Archives, sorry, I'm kind of dominating with curiosity here. <laughs> no, Prague Archives have a new release list, or is it just you're looking at the re reviews and the newest ones that come in? Well, it's right up to date. Yeah, Prague Archives yeah. Is, is an interesting one. It's like, it's basically not changed since like... I was going to say, it hasn't changed years. since like the mid-2000s. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's the exact the same website. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's what the Space Jam... Uh, Yes, uh, web page used yeah. to be before they came I, out with the other one. I've I, come up with a theory, right? The universe will actually end the second that Prog Archives removes that picture of Ian Lucasen with their T-shirt. <laughs> when, when that gets removed, the universe explodes. You know, oh, that's boy. just like my theory of everything, right there. Yeah, um, yeah, because they have um, like obviously the top current year list, uh, but it's not like in terms of um release date it's just by popularity um there is like the most popular album within the last 24 hours but it's usually dominated by like the big acts rather mm. than kind of like the smaller underdogs there's been like some is... news come out about a band or whatever it's into something like, yeah to the top you know sort of thing that's that's my only real criticism of the prog archives is they don't have like a mm. as they come out list of albums mm. it's just yeah. like hey this is the one that's most popular most likely due to some of the legacy bands that are here you know like, i tend to check pop, it like yeah. maybe once every couple of weeks or so to see if there's anything sort of like i check like the top whatever of the year sort of thing that's coming out and i'm like have i listened uh -huh. to that yeah is that interesting i mean it's through prog archives that i found out there was a new zop album so that was pretty hype and yeah. i found out about that and it was amazing love yeah. that record very very pleased about that so yeah it, it's a good it's a good tool it's a good system it's not perfect or anything like that but it's it's really <laughs> quite good especially for finding like Neo prog, symphonic prog, sort of old school crossover stuff, that kind of thing. Not so great for the more extreme side of things because it's very much you, you can always like notice a um the user base of a website has a particular preference towards certain yes. things. And prog archives it's is definitely of, old school preference. It kind yeah, of reminds me a bit yeah. of like uh the metal archives. Mm -hmm. I mean mm -hmm. My own musical project, Borealia, is not metal enough for the metal archives. <laughs> I remember you saying that, yeah. So, and, and there's like big debates over there about what counts as metal and what doesn't. Metalcore isn't metal to them. Oh, Gent isn't metal to them. They will well, never we have all know, an article on that. I was going to say, Gent is not a genre. So hey! hey. <laughs> we all know that. Sorry. It's I'll in writing. <laughs> Oh boy. I, I'm intrigued though, Nathan. I got to ask. Um, when it comes to actually recording your videos, because I know there's obviously going to be a lot of people who use different things. Like, what, like, what software do you actually use to actually do your videos? Because for the longest time, I was thinking, what the hell should I use? And I bounced through a few different things. But I got to admit, I am intrigued as to what people actually use to make their videos. Yeah. So for me, I have my Mac that I use for all my stuff, and I use I think it's called o OBS Studio or oh, something yeah. like that. Yeah, so I just utilize that, which is good too with my videos with Jana because you're able to like pipe in the music to react to as well, or good. or have a, like a picture in picture kind of thing if you need it to to react to a video. So I utilize that mostly to record my videos. Awesome. Yeah, I love OBS. I use that all the time when I was streaming. Um, it's a very fun, powerful, and free tool. So. Yeah. Yeah. Is this the part so, where I find out it's only on Mac? No. Um, I mean, I think there's it's, a Windows based. Yeah, like it's an open source. Ooh. Thing. Yeah, there's a Windows kind of, version. Yeah, I think it's kind of like Audacity in that it's open source. People can use it and download it. Yeah. Um I will have to give it a try. Yeah. Oh, and it's OBS. Got it. I've got it open on the window. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, ha, ha, I found it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of jealous of your setup, Nathan, because it's just it seems so easy just to click. Just to go mm -hmm, <laughs> to like yeah. at your, is that like your desk for work too? Or do you work? Yeah, this is just oh, yeah, in computer, my, so no. yeah, this, just my home, home office, I guess. I just have a desk and, you know, this wall behind me, the, the vinyl wall. So something my wife helped put together. So <laughs> it looks really good. I do like it a lot. Yeah, it does. thanks. You also do like one take, like you just do. Yeah, it's like a one-shot film. I'm like in awe. Of like it's like Wes Anderson or something. Like that, you know? <laughs> I I personally cannot do that when I'm I shooting videos. No. Like, if you saw like what was left on the cutting room floor after <laughs> right? I made yeah. the video, like there's just a lot of 
long pauses and a lot of me going yeah on. yeah and uh a lot of me a lot of a lot of swearing. that dropped out of videos there's a lot of yeah. me swearing if i can't manage to get a particular oh, yeah. word out like there was one particular word i was trying to get out on a video a while back i don't remember for the life of me what word it was but like every single time i tried to say it i was like, oh, and I was yeah. like ah! i was getting yeah. so annoyed. i was like right screw it i'm changing the script it's a different word now the old word doesn't exist <laughs> yeah i'm i'm in awe of people like nathan and scott and yeah. Sia, tranquility and there was oh what's oh i can't remember his name but he was on uh, it's gonna bug me. He covered a lot of prog, but also metal. Um, and he would also do it all in one take. Um, his cover for the longest time was of uh, Stephen Wilson's "Grace for Drowning." Is it um, Cover Killer? That's it, Cover Killer yeah. Nation. Yeah, <laughs> my heart goes out to him because he was, you know, part of the reason why he stopped was he had like heart surgery and whatnot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, all mm. one take, and like he would do a full take, but then something would screw up, and then he had to go right back to the beginning and oh, no. record it all over again. <laughs> um, so I'm always in awe of anybody that does like a one take because much like you guys, there's a lot that's left on my cutting room, yeah. um, especially where I'm talking about a, an album. And I'm like, did that actually happen in that song? And then I have to listen to like half the song. I, I know. Like, it, so. I'll, I'll listen to an album like 30 times and still like completely miss mm -hmm. a song or think oh, yeah. that, wow, you know, there was a really good keyboard part in that one song, yet there wasn't even any keyboard in the song whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like Mandela effect all over again. It yeah. is, it is, yeah. <laughs> Oh, or you get fun. too many bands that you're reviewing and you're starting to mix the two up. That's, yeah. I've done that too. <laughs> like, oh, oh. That was I'm one done. of the things that really kind of drew me away from Ultimate Guitar a bit was I didn't really have much say in the genres that I got to mm. pick. And mm. of course, being Ultimate Guitar, they're going to go for a lot of guitar bass, rock mm. and metal. Right. And it tends to be whatever's popular at the time. So it's going to be a lot of those, I guess, uh, what some people would affectionately call butt rock albums um, you know your nickelbacks yep. and your seethers and that kind of stuff and it just kind of became a while where like every album i reviewed was in that genre and everything was just like a solid six mm. or seven out of ten it and leads into one sort of thing one know? album yeah. just like every album is just exactly the same yeah yeah and they're not yeah. bad enough for you to be like <laughs> highly critical like i i almost really enjoy getting an album that i absolutely despise <laughs> because I can, I can rip on it. I can yeah. say yeah. nasty things about it, or I can make <laughs> jokes. Like I can do something more interesting with it. Mm -hmm. But when it's just yeah. an album that's just kind of mid, those are the hardest records for me to review. So difficult. Absolutely. Absolutely, it's one of the reasons. Honestly, like for for me, from my perspective of my my own channel, is I tend to review the extremes. I tend to either review <laughs> the stuff I one hundred percent adore, or the stuff I just want to throw in the bin. Because I tend to find that talking about the stuff in between is very difficult. It's it's like, it's good, but it's not good. It's bad, but it's not bad. I have middling feelings <laughs> about it? this record. Which it, it, it's yeah. fine, it's fine to talk about that sort of stuff. But then you've got something which you just want to just, you know, just drop in a dumpster fire and just have a big, you know, massive <laughs> stupid grin on your face whilst you tear it and you, like, whatever. <laughs> Or the one that basically makes you think that you've seen God once again, you know? Like, I yeah. mean, I've had a few of those this year. I'm not going to lie. Oh, wow. It's mm -hmm. been a good year mm -hmm. so far. Wow. <laughs> yeah. My, not, my, I want to dump in the yeah. <laughs> my, uh, my fiance says, How was the album? Was it fine? Because fine <laughs> is like anything from like a, like a four to a six in like a 10 out of 10, right? So it's like, if it's fine, she's like, Ooh, that's the worst because it's the hardest to talk about. <laughs> yeah. All I can say is like it was fine. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm it glad it's not just me who feels that way about records. Yeah. Oh, it, it does feel like about. it it's the extremes that I find more appealing. Like I, I mm -hmm. it's the ones which just blow my mind open that I just love the most. Because when it comes down to it, what I like to do on my channel, what I prefer to do is to review the stuff that I think people will walk away from and really enjoy. Because ultimately I want people to listen to stuff they're going to like. I mm -hmm. want people to watch mm -hmm. a video and think to themselves, oh my goodness, I want to go and listen to that record right now. So that that person can then have a similar experience that I've had with that record. So that's why I love to put the spotlight on things that are brilliant, things that are fantastic. Mm -hmm. There's always the argument to be made about, oh, this person only reviews good things. They only talk about good things. It's all a bit blah, 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 blah. 
And honestly, I'm willing to take that criticism about my channel completely, like, fine. I don't care if somebody thinks all I talk about is the stuff I love. Because there's a reason I only talk about the stuff that I love. It's because I want other people to love it too. I want right. other people yeah. to experience the joy that I'm getting from these records and just really spread that message, you know? Mm -hmm. Speaking of that, we should all do an average of our <laughs> channel history re uh, totally. rankings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This would be like a, a fine out of masterpiece <laughs> or whatever that's right. yeah yeah throw it in the bin it's fine and then masterpiece you know yeah. there's no other in-betweens you know it's just that's like, it yeah. yeah one out of three that's yeah. it that's it yeah i i i have a question actually to ask to people as well um mm. as a general rule now when i'm picking something up to actually have a review of it. There's always that argument that I've had from a few people where they will say, how can you possibly have an opinion about XYZ album? You've only listened to it for a week. And I honestly think that's a fair criticism to levy at the sort of content that I produce. You know, this my content is reasonably reactionary in that respect. You know, I, I'm not going to sit on an album for five, six months before I review it, because at that point I feel like, I, I want to get it out there. I, I need to sort of like mm -hmm. put my thoughts out whilst they're fresh in my head. But I've got this sort of thing in my head where I have a strict number of times I have to listen to a record before I even start talking about it, before I even start thinking about talking about it. And for me, every single record that I have ever reviewed, I have listened to a bare minimum of six times. Mm. It has to be a minimum of six times because the first time I will always listen to a record, it'll be casually no headphones i might be doing something else at the same time and if it manages to intrigue me enough then i'll think okay now i'll just sit and listen to it without headphones but just nothing else going on then it's the headphone listen then it's mm -hmm. the deep dive listen and mm -hmm. then it's the uh piecemeal my favorite tracks sort of listen and then once more again around the sun uh from start to finish with headphones in a darkened room with nobody else knocking on the door or ever disturbing me ever Go away, I'm listening. <laughs> I'm making my decision. Go away. <laughs> um, and I'm intrigued as to how often does everybody else sort of listen to a record before they decide what their like final thoughts and opinions on it are. I think I it really I... depends on the album. Like, yeah, some five listens and I've, I've got it. I've got what I want to say. Other times, it's like the new Haken album. I'm still not uh -huh. happy and familiar uh -huh. with my thoughts on it. Like, it really depends. Yeah. Mm, yeah uh, i feel the same way too like um i've been meaning to get a review of the new metallica album out for however many weeks it's been out now like it's been out almost mm -hmm. a month i think mm. and uh just every time i listen to it i come away from it like feeling a little bit differently about it each time and mm -hmm. it becomes very difficult to sort of draw a line between where like am i just doing a reaction or am I doing like, this is how I actually feel about this mm -hmm. album in the long term. Cause I know that I've done a couple of reviews before uh, of albums for fun, like for my own enjoyment that like, I only listened to a couple times, really hated the record the first time I heard it, then, you know, listened to it more and they'd end up becoming like personal favorites of mine, like a, big example is that uh, Duron Gray Euroborus record mm -hmm. absolutely hated that album the first time I listened to it and mm -hmm. um, <laughs> wrote the review and just absolutely <laughs> tore it a new one in the review and it is now among my top 10 albums of all time so yeah it, it can be really challenging sometimes mm -hmm. to figure out like when do I draw that line and just say all right it's time to do the review even if mm. your thoughts on it change, even next time you listen to the album. Mm. So yeah. I, yeah, I, I have a, cause I kind of work with two different deadlines. Like I, there is a selfish part of me that wants to capitalize on the new release and get my thoughts out. I don't want to say as soon as possible, but like if, if the album drops on the Friday, I want to have a review out at least by the next Wednesday you know, just while it's still fresh, mm. while it's still, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in, in the oh, conversation, yeah. right? Because I want people to discover my videos. I want people to see the review. It's like, oh, this new album is out. So let's mm -hmm. see what mm -hmm. people are saying about it, right? So I do want to capitalize on that. So I, but I also don't want to compromise that and put out a half-finished thought 
as my end product. So yeah, exactly. I, if, yeah. So luckily now I've been, been, you know, lucky enough to get albums ahead of time so I can put in that extra listen before the album actually drops. So I have a full fledged idea of it, but yeah, I think much like what most people are saying, like it depends on the album. Like I remember there was a tangent album that came out a while ago. It wasn't their most recent one, but it was when that came out. I only needed one listen to, and I had my fully formed idea of what I thought about that album. Uh, and every time I go back to it, it's the same, the same thing. Yeah. Um, the... But then there are. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, like, yeah, there are some cases where it just takes that one listen and you've got your opinion down. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, but there are others that it takes a while. Like um, <clears throat> I felt so much pressure to try to review Devin Townsend's Empath mm. because it dropped on the the Friday and I felt so much pressure to get a review out by that Wednesday. But even by that Wednesday, I was like, I don't know what I want to say about this. I, I know it's good, but mm. I don't, I don't have that synthesized full fleshed idea out. Um, I think I actually so remember much talking like, to you about yeah. that particular mm -hmm. review. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I still like I I still believe everything that I said on that and it doesn't feel rushed, but I spent that entire weekend doing nothing else, just <laughs> sitting down and listening to that album so I can get the review out for that. So but yeah, I don't I mean, there's a few albums where I know I the more listens won't change my mind about it. So, mm. yeah, I think it's like very dependent say, on the there record. Are, there are some bands out there where. To give them cursory listens to sort of form an opinion based off one listen, you just know in your heart that to do so would be disingenuous, to be mm -hmm. almost unfair to the band. I mean, take an example, I don't know, um, Cult of Luna, for example. Um, oh, yeah. I will firmly stand my ground and say they are one of the most consistent, most excellent bands on the planet. They are post-metal extraordinaire to the point of absurdity. They are the rule book, as far as I'm concerned. They are the gold standard to which all post-metal will be held for me. But if I was to spend one day listening to a Cult of Luna record and to try and make an opinion based off, like, even if I did my requisite six listens in that one day, which will probably take up like 80% mm -hmm. of the day anyway, because they're long-ass records, <laughs> <laughs> I feel that the density and the sheer complexity of what they bring to the table with every release they do, it needs time. It's not about the mm -hmm. number of listens at that point. It is about the time that you need to let it sort of sit on your palate to really appreciate and understand the, the technical nuances and the complexities within each record because they are dense. They are ridiculously packed full of so many ideas that to really just sort of, as much as I would want to sort of like bring a review out within a certain time frame, because I, I do want to try and capture that target audience as best, best as I can, because, you know, obviously small growing YouTuber, you're trying to get that attention. You're trying to get that sort of, um, hey, look at me, I'm over here. My opinions are valid as well. But mm -hmm. there's also that part of me, that moral compass, which won't allow myself to sort of try and rush something out because you want to talk about it genuinely. And it's yeah. trying to strike that balance between the genuine nature of what you're trying to say versus the chasing the algorithm, I want to call it, you know, yeah. sort of trying to get out that opinion piece, not because I'm trying to chase numbers or I'm trying to chase clicks or subs or whatever, because I want people to see it. I want people to appreciate what I think about this and hopefully expose them to it as well. Because mm -hmm. ultimately my reward from doing what I do every single time is if one person, one single person listens to the record that I've reviewed and then tells me like whatever stupid name I've come up with myself that week. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's the hardest part of my job, of what I do, by the way. Um, they'll say to me like, that was like, a life changing moment for them. Like that is like the record of the year for them. And if I can look back and say what I've done brought that to that person, that is why I do what I do. That is what yeah. I truly love mm -hmm. about this. Yeah. Me too. That, yeah, it's, it's also this kind of unspoken pressure, or maybe it's just built into the nature of reviewing or the history of reviewing where there was a gate closed in the past. And what reviewers said actually had a real impact on on sales because he didn't have this just streaming mm -hmm. openness and YouTube, you know, accessibility for reviewers like us to just hop on. And so it feels like you have to have a value judgment, you know, immediately. And you, your conclusion has to be a, a good or bad instead mm -hmm. of just uh, this is how I'm experiencing this record. So I appreciate when 
and reviewers have that where it's like, I don't have a, a even a recommendation for you of go definitely pick this up or not, mm -hmm. or uh, seven or eight out of 10, but just explain the, the emotions and the, the mm -hmm. process and the full experience. The body yeah. of the review will always have more value to me than the score at the end of it every single time. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I know a lot of reviewers that have actually done away with scoring um, because of that. Um, but I, I, I still feel, I don't know. That's why I like the scoring that I have. It's more uh, of a, like it's a, fun. a bleak. Yeah, like it's it's more of like a, an actionable item, right? Yeah. Rather than a... a monetizable goal right yeah i mean um, when you when you ask yourself what is the fundamental difference between an eight out of ten record and a nine out of ten record like what is actually mm -hmm. the quantifiable difference between those two whereas it's yeah. a case of definitely go and grab this you know do pick this up in like whatever format you can get the vinyl get it on cd get on tape get it on all three why not versus mm -hmm. it's okay stream it see if you like it first then make your own informed decision based off that which i think is yeah. a much more I don't know. It, it feels like a more genuine way of actually sort of critiquing the music. But ultimately, mm -hmm. everything out there right now that is being released is due to be released is something to someone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are ultimately mm -hmm. just a voice, an opinion. And, you know, and yeah. I appreciate the opinions of others a great deal. Everybody here, I love hearing what you guys say about everything that you do. And I always take it on board, whatever it is you have to say. There's been a bunch of records I've listened to recently that I definitely wouldn't have listened to otherwise without you guys. And mm -hmm. some of them have absolutely blown my mind. Like I've got a bunch of stuff I'm working on at the moment, uh, some of which <laughs> is like because of what you guys have said. And I know there's been a lot of criticism. Like I can't remember who it was. He was going on about what's the point of music critics? Now? Yeah, yes. Harry Styles. There it is, Harry Styles. Uh, that, that, the, all, the, all the Harry Styles uh, uh, stands who are watching this. Hi, by the way. I'm sure there's about three, I'm sure there's about three of you. <laughs> you know, because we are totally within your wheelhouse. This niche. Um, yeah. I still value music criticism in a, a great deal, not just because I would consider myself a music critic, but because I, I like hearing the opinions of others. I find it very interesting how each individual interprets and analyzes the same record, like how one thing can be so many different things to so many different people. And I love mm -hmm. hearing what everyone else thinks about something. Yeah. And music yeah. nowadays can be a very insular experience. You know, you're just like 100%. in your car or it's like, it's you. And so there, that community aspect we have to, yeah, that's yeah. a big part of the value. And it's interesting, like, I understand what Harry was getting at in that, you know, as because everything's on streaming sites, we no mm -hmm. longer go out to a record store and buy things. I mean, who has a record store in their city now? Um, but I think it's a, a different type of currency that we now have. It's the currency of our attention. And because there's so much out there, you know, I feel like we as reviewers and critics help navigate and point out to people where that attention needs to be played you know so like there's so much out there now that's readily at our fingertips i only have so much time in a day mm -hmm. to listen to that so i go to reviewers and whatnot to see oh should i spend my attention on is this it album worth or your not? Time, exactly yeah is it worth mm -hmm. my time um, i know there's of, a lot of yeah. albums that i never even would have heard of if i hadn't have watched your videos yeah. so mm -hmm. you know yeah. And as far yeah. as it goes for me, rating things, I have to do that for the end of the year or if I'm comparing a discography. But that is the only reason I do it that way. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting. That reminded me there's been a little secret in my videos that um, help oh. me tell whether or not an album I find is very good or not. Um, in it's not my the Anthony thumbnail. Fantano method, is it? It is in my thumbnail. Oh! In my thumbnail, if I really, really do love the album, I put the album on the right hand side. Oh, Ooh, I don't. If it's just like an okay album, then it's always on the left. So this okay. way, I can go through all of my albums at the end of the year and say, okay, this that's... was a right side. This was a right side. Okay, now that's I can. That's clever. Yeah. Wow. And so, like if that. you see an album that's on my right, on the right side in my Ooh. thumbnail, then you know it's so be a good album. I've been Tight. reading the wrong part of your thumbnails. I always try to like <laughs> look at your facial expression. Yeah. You yeah. my like. You look I'm happy. happy. They like it or not? <laughs> no, I've just been lazy now. I've just been grabbing whatever the last frame is on my um, on my recording. <laughs> that's how I make <laughs> my I thumbnails. I can just yeah. imagine now oh, you've got your, right. your album of the year there on your thumbnails, like. 
<laughs> okay. Well, that's just 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 misleading at this point. I just yeah. try to grab a screen cap where I don't look like a goblin, and uh, <laughs> go with that. I could try and do that with mine, but I'd be there all day scrubbing through every millisecond trying to find someone that doesn't make me look like I'm in gremlin attack mode. You know? <laughs> Oh boy. Well, uh, this was something that I actually wanted to ask you guys because, you know, we consume so much records and this was some this is something that I've experienced so often is I will hold off doing a review for an album because I'm still enjoying it. Like I have an idea fully fleshed out of what I want to say about the album. I have my review already rewritten in my mind, but I don't put out a review because I make the excuse, "Oh, I still need to live listen to it another couple of times." Like the new um I'm going to mispronounce the name, but it's like Dodd Heimsgard, oh. uh, the black medium current. I have not been wow. able to stop listening to. And I'm like, oh, I just need a few more listen to it. So I won't do a review for it this week because I still want to get another few listens to it. And so I wonder, good. does anybody like not put out a review because they're still listening to the album, even though they have a fully fleshed out idea of yeah. the record going on? Crown Lines right now is that album for me. <laughs> it's on the record yeah. player. I listen to it probably once a day at least. And I keep saying, yeah. no, this is the week. This is the week. This is the week. It'll be November yeah. before you'll see it, but. Envious of Nathan's uh, vinyl copy there. I'm going to find, kind of find a, a reasonably priced one in the UK. And it's just like, ha ha, that would be 17 try, pounds, please. Try <laughs> Amazon. I'll give it a shot. I'll have to, I'll check yeah. it out after this video and see yeah. what I can find. My, yeah. my, my wish going... list is like quadrupled in size. Since <laughs> yeah, I started again. So is yeah. mine. I'm going to Toronto this weekend and I plan to hit up a record store or two for that. Awesome. That specific record. So mm. yeah. Maybe I'm giving away the... Uh verdict on 72 seasons but the new metallic album is one that i'm kind of in that state with where mm. i i have a review for it in my head like i've got a script i've got my thoughts on it properly organized but i still just want to listen to it a few more times i want to see what it is that makes me think the way i'm thinking about it before i really commit to getting those thoughts out there it's a very and colorful coaster <laughs> I, I'll but that's what you little, really think about that ooh, yeah. i'll spoil ooh. it a little by saying ooh. i'm actually enjoying the record more than i thought i would yeah that's you were not looking not forward bad. to it yeah i was i was kind of uh in trepidation of having to listen to it and mm -hmm. there are still major flaws but um i i could take some positives away from it okay okay yeah, James we'll have to see when I make it. my review. Mm, I look forward to it. <laughs> There's your review. Yeah. <laughs> three seconds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. YouTube shorts, you're done. Well, you well, you know, my, my all-time favorite music review is, is actually of a fictional album. Mm -hmm. Spinal Taps, Shark Sandwich. Okay. okay. <laughs> the review just simply says, uh, am I allowed to swear on this? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Shit Sandwich. <laughs> greatest album review of all time in my opinion oh, yeah. oh, boy. <laughs> i need to watch spinal i need to watch this is spinal tap again it's, it's, it's such yeah, a good five, film. Six, about, about five six years since i last watched it you know yeah. blew my mind when i realized that uh chuck from better call souls and i was like what yeah <laughs> i feel like there's something to be said going back to what you were saying now it's about having enough of an audience where like yours where they there's an expectation around things that has to make things a little more complicated because for me i can cover such a range of anything that it doesn't there's mm -hmm. no, no looming expectation about any given record yeah it's hard because like i've i had to make a promise to myself maybe about three or four years ago because i found i was trace chasing trends you know following what people expected to see on a prog channel um, but it just, it, my heart wasn't in it covering some of these albums that I didn't have anything to say. Again, they were fine. Um, and I just, I had to continue to cover albums that I knew would only get maybe about 500 views at the end of the day, even though I knew that another album would be, you know, 5,000 views. Um, so yeah, there's kind of had to step back a little bit mm. from that. And also, like, I want to cover music that I want to talk about. Much to Ian's point about, you know, yeah. um, I want people to walk away with an album that they could love. Mm -hmm. um, and that might not be from an album that they would originally know about. Um, you know, kind of going back to what Nathan was saying about trying to find where 
to look for albums uh, and new albums. You know, I'm blessed that I have a huge um, audience base that keeps recommending albums for me. Yeah. And if I see that more people, like a lot of people are recommending the same album, then I'm like, okay, well, go and check it out. Because mm -hmm. everybody and their grandmother has an album that they want me to check out. Um, so <laughs> seeing that there's a reason for that. <laughs> <laughs> there is. Uh, but seeing like the same album over and over again, mm. um, then I'm like, okay, that's an album that I want to look at because it's mm. getting a lot of buzz. I know a lot of people want to get my opinion on it. And sometimes that opinion is just, it's fine. But, you know, I still kind of want to let people 10. know about that. Yeah, it's a fine out of 10. Um, <laughs> we love fine out of 10. It's a good that's fine actually, out of 10. That does actually bring me to a, a fairly interesting question, actually. Um, where, like internet wise do we normally go to for our sort of written sources i mean i can sort of like splurge mm. out where i normally go to like my go-to's i've got sort of like another window open here so i tend to go with um heavy blog is heavy angry metal guy Slotnik music sonic perspectives progressive subway prog space metal injection metal wani uh what else have we got everything's noise yep there we go uh you, you must read a lot of your reviews that's how you take in most I, I i do read a lot of these blogs like every day i will check these blogs every single day yeah. um, mm -hmm. i i listen mostly um because yeah. i'm doing other things so it's not but um i i'll just check metacritic and then yeah. click on a few for albums i'm interested in and that's just one way to do it kind of scan through yeah. yeah um i i follow a lot of those uh same uh websites you do ian uh, I also read a lot of the uh, news articles and uh, sometimes reviews since I'm not doing them anymore on Ultimate Guitar. Okay. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They do cover a lot of uh, prog and metal stuff from time to time. So uh, it's a good source of information for me. So yeah, that yeah. Much the that's usually where I get a lot of like my information about things like uh, new releases. Um, yeah. Just yeah people's thoughts on upcoming yeah, albums I, things like that yeah in my early days of starting out one of my friend or one of my fans i can't remember who it is now uh sent me a link to this um self not i don't know if it's self-generating but it's fan generated um spreadsheet of all the prog rock and metal rock stuff coming out and it's literally a google doc Ooh. just called prog metal yearly albums <gasps> Oh, and wow. they up they upload <laughs> it, it like yeah yep. so back like 2016 sort of thing yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so i've bookmarked that and it has all of the albums either prog rock or metal rock of this year and the date that they're going to be released so i can plan ahead of time to say okay well i know that this album is coming out at this time i can get my hands on it at this time so i can get the review out for this time um and that has saved my arse a number of times because there's been a few albums, bigger albums that have slipped through the cracks through the years. And I'm like, I didn't review that. And it would have been great to know it was coming out so I could either get hyped for it or prepare yeah. my thoughts for it. Um, but yeah, I so that's been an invaluable resource. And I check that yeah. almost weekly just to see where I'm at for that. Um, yeah, other than that, I as sad as it sounds, I go to a lot of like big name reviewers for music, you know, like Anthony Fantano, um, Spectrum Pulse, Rocked, uh, Crash Thompson, and all of those um, for music in general. Uh, but for prog, it's the spreadsheet mm. and um, it's you know, you prog guys. archives. <laughs> ah. It's you guys and all you guys, <laughs> obviously. I must admit, yeah. I, I I always click a yellow flannel um, if I see mm -hmm. a yellow flannel, <laughs> just out of just out of interest. Yeah. Like my, I mean, respect to Fantano. Like he has created an empire. Like mm -hmm. very very impressed with what he's done. Um, I do find that my tastes do not align with his like most of the time. Yeah. Like death, like death grips. I don't get death grips at all. Never understood death grips. <laughs> I'm like, what is this? I don't get it. Or whatever. But yeah. um, I'm always intrigued whenever there's a yellow flannel because like, mm -hmm. you, you, I, I, I always want to see what Melon's on about these days. You know, like what mm -hmm. what is the hype for Melon? You know, it seems like if it's not to go too far into this, but if it's rock related, then it's like it's all about the ferocity of it and the yeah. adventurousness mm. and yeah. not really about like songwriting or, mm. or anything yeah. like that. It's, and it's so interesting. This is when I know somebody is very talented in doing a review. If they can explain properly what the, what it is that draws them to the album or 
what it is that they don't connect with to the album. So at least I have a baseline of what they're talking about. Yeah. So I know exactly where Fantano is on an album. And based on his descriptions, he will let me know whether or not I will enjoy it, even if he didn't. Yeah. And that so that's sense. something yeah. that I apply to my reviews is I always try to explain why it is that I like an album or don't like an album yeah. to a point where somebody can say, okay, this is why they like it. Maybe I will like it if he didn't because of this aspect of the album. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's, that's where I was at for that one. Admittedly, <laughs> I'm not the biggest fan of Fantano. I, oh, I can take I, or leave him. I can take or leave take, him. Take it or, yeah. I, I know that there's a very small Venn diagram between our tastes. <laughs> like, they're almost oh, yeah. like that. <laughs> I mean, yeah. but, He's but I still respect him. Does. I still respect him in that sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. good yeah. at reviewing. I just oh, definitely. don't see eye to eye with him on most of his views. Yeah. I appreciate fine. the tastes of the people within this this video more mm -hmm. than I appreciate the taste that he have. Like Nathan has got impeccable taste when it comes to like symphonic prog and retro prog. I know that if Nathan vibes on something like that, then I'm probably gonna love it as well. You know, it's just like <laughs> I can very I feel like I very much trust Nathan's opinion when it comes to that sort of stuff, you know. So it's like yeah. if I'm in the mood for some retro prog or some symphonic prog and Nathan vibes on it, I'm thinking I'm probably gonna vibe on it as well, you know. So it's, I always feel like I've got that dependency there with you, mate. And I really do appreciate that a great deal. I always like watching your stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And just seeing where all the different overlaps are within, you know, our own little community is always my yeah. favorite part, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm always trying to like expand my taste slightly because I know I'm very centered in that retro <laughs> prog, symphonic prog vein. <laughs> and so it's hard to decide how to divide my time between like trying out new things, but mm. also enjoying the music that I know I love already you know so mm -hmm. yeah but I, I appreciate some of the more uh different kinds of recommendations that a lot of you guys pull out that really expand yeah. my taste in different directions that i wouldn't otherwise have looked at yeah we'll get you guys into death metal eventually hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm working on it little by little <laughs> Well, I'm I'm working on a review for the new Dozer record at the moment. It's like 15 years since the last kind yeah. of Stoner Rock sort of stuff. And Stoner Rock's always been like sort of a sort of a gray area for me. I kind of don't like it sometimes and love it other times. But spoilers, mm -hmm. this one is hot. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. And I really yeah. hope that at least one of you loves it as well because it's so amazing. Yeah, it's on yeah, my I have, list to I check have, out. <laughs> and again, I have that one also on my list of uh, I've got two, four, six, eight records currently that I'm Ooh, shuffling wow. through through review this week. So wow, yeah, hey, you're back on that like one per weekday almost. Well, we're, we're gonna see. <laughs> yeah, um, for a while. There, Don't burn yourself once... out. <laughs> for a while, it was once a day. Now I've slowed down. Ooh. It's once every other day. Um, but yeah, one of the hardest things is keeping it all in my head because I will sit down and I'll record like six to eight reviews all in one go and then spend the week editing those videos um, all at once and trying to remind myself, okay, this is the NR Solberg album. This is the Dozer album. This is the Five uh, Fires yeah. in the Distance album. This is the Ice Age album. This is the Yes album. This, <laughs> And I have to like keep all the- I hope you start mislabeling things. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. This is That's the Fires question. in the Black Country New Road record. Yeah, I have to I have to listen to something like immediately before in in order for the reaction to be authentic. Yeah. Because otherwise, if I have some notes about some guitar yeah. solo and I don't remember it, then it doesn't feel like what I'm saying is it's just I'm just reciting some note. Whenever I'm scripting yeah. something, like I've got my Google Doc open, I will have the record playing in the background on repeat, da -da 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 -da, and I'll sort of like write bits of what I'm listening to and like little sort of random grab bags, and then I'll sort of stitch it all together like a Frankenstein's monster at the end, and then put like make it work by putting like a little connective paragraphs and what have you, and yeah, and it just all, I, all goes on to the. Um, uh, I like tend the, to do the, that too. App. <laughs> yeah, so Matthew, it's just because it's, it's how it works for me. Yeah. yeah. How how do you review music? Um, I think it probably closer to Ian's uh, style as far as writing things out a little bit more clearly for myself. Because you like literally write a, a script, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I ad lib a little bit over it as well because I have yeah. to have my own inimitable delivery style, of course. <laughs> right. Such as it is, you know. Yeah, you could write something that's like, that's not me. I'm yeah, like, exactly. You'd, <laughs> you'd know if it was AI generated, let's put it that way. Because it's, it's, I've got yeah. my flair, baby. I've got Count my Count the style. fingers, man. Count yeah. the fingers. I, I'm pretty slow. That's it. Yeah. 
I kind of play to my strengths. I'm like slow and deliberate. I'm more of a writer. I can't do the one take thing like like Nathan does or Scott. Um, yeah. I have to, I basically just write out notes for myself in a almost five paragraph essay sort of outline yeah. um, and just bullet points. And then yeah. I just look at it and then I just say something that is close to what I wrote. Yeah. So it's pretty, pretty direct, um, whatever mm -hmm. my notes are, end up being the, the review. And and I, like I said with Nathan, I, I want to become a little bit more spontaneous in order to just get more vi videos out uh, um, and just be a little bit more prolific in that way. But it, I really, I also know that that's like not me, mm -hmm. you know, so I have to, I'm not going to extend too far in that direction because it just won't be won't be real see the funny the funny thing is is i'm trying to go more in the opposite direction <laughs> uh, a lot of my videos and it's pretty noticeable in some of them i'm ad-libbing the whole thing there have been times i don't even have bullet point notes in front of me i'm just doing it from memory having listened to the album maybe an hour before i'm filming the review mm -hmm. and i'm thinking if i want to get more videos out and have them be of a higher caliber of quality i'm gonna start to need to actually maybe write myself a little script for every single one of them because like i i'm not the most uh i'm not the best orator in front of a camera so finding the right words can be difficult and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe it would be in my benefit to kind of look at things from the opposite perspective. I, I should try to be less spontaneous and have a <laughs> more orderly, mm -hmm. this is how my review is going to go, written down in front of me when I'm filming. So, yeah, and I don't know I if, if Ian, you feel the oh. same way, but just to what you're saying, Travis, mm. like having, you can go too far in extreme. Mm. Yeah. yeah, 100%. Where all of a sudden it's like, yeah um you're just reading or you're oh, just that's it. reciting the, yeah the biggest but, thing yeah. that i'm always worried about when it comes to my reviews is that it comes across like i am reading a script i never want it to sound mm. like i'm going but that's just not how i read things you know when i'm typing i'm hearing myself saying it in my head i am dictating effectively in some ways in a lot of times when i have written these scripts i actually have just picked up my phone turned on um you know voice to text mode and i've literally just word vomited at it and edited it later but right. the first time actually that i made a review um obviously apart from these of course where i didn't have any form of script was my uh, my recent vinyl update collection mm. um video mm -hmm. i was just like i'm just gonna see what happens we're just gonna go with it and i ended up waffling for like 25 minutes which is just uh, just so me <laughs> it's just like <laughs> i have no script it's gonna be a short video oh no it <laughs> turns out that was a lie <laughs> <laughs> I just I just can't help myself sometimes. I just keep going, you know. Um, and that yeah. feels very much like it's my style when I'm like when I do have these scripts in front of myself. Like I do have my own style and how I talk and how I present these things. Um yeah. and I like to think that these particular videos do demonstrate the fact that these scripts that I am writing are very much me, you know. Uh -huh. The the uh -huh. delivery, the style, the personality that I try and bring across in everything that I do. It's like Whenever Scott from the Prog Corner does a video, I love his personality so much. He has got so much passion and so much joy in everything that he does. And every time I just hear greetings, respect, and love, I'm like, oh, it's, oh let's go. I love it. I love it so much. It just, I, I, do, I get hype. I love it so much. Scott, love the stuff you do. It's so good. Absolutely. Um, and I love... And I never really want to get to the point where I feel like I am just like a, a chat AI robot delivering a script. I want there to be that personality that connection that i do even though you can mm -hmm. probably see my eyes glazing slightly to the left of the right as i'm following the script or whatever it's like i never want the person to feel like they could just get the exact same experience from just reading this on a website or i've literally got the script copy and pasted i want the experience to be partially how i deliver this review how i ad lib little bits over here and there and just the way that i deliver it that's to me that is so important that i try and keep who i am inside mm -hmm. that script and inside the review and to never yeah. compromise because when i look back at the very very first review i ever did back in early 2022 when it was um world world runs epigon 
Like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I look, I am so stilted. It's like I have got a freaking broom handle up my backside and I'm being popped around <laughs> by like, I'm like, oh no, it's coming. <laughs> what do I do? Oh, panic, oh, panic, yeah. panic, panic, you know. And you're, I, lucky, I, I, you're lucky it's only 2020 and not all right, yeah. 2015. I, I just I was gonna say I was like, oh, there oh, are some boy. some old videos for me where I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> oh, that's real. Yeah. Um, but Ian, you you touched upon something really important when it comes to longevity of audiences, because like I will mm. go to channels for an album that I love or an album that I want to hear the review of for somebody I don't know. Mm, but I will mm. return for their personality. Yeah. You know, I will I will search yeah. out somebody I don't know for an album that I will love or I want to hear the opinions of, but I will stay for somebody that I love their personality for. That's it. Yeah. Um like one that I've recently found specifically in kind of like the metal side of things that again, he was reviewing um a number of new prog metal stuff that I'm like, "Ooh, this is really good." Um but I had to stay around was uh, the metal Tris, I think it is T R I S. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm sub to them. Yeah. You know, uh, stuff. because I wanted to hear, I was looking at new Neo Oblivious albums. I was looking for the new periphery. Uh, he's got a couple uh, interviews on his channel already, but I'm staying because I'm like, this guy's got such an infectious personality. Mm. Um. And that's what I, I really keeps like me coming back to all of your channels um, mm, is because mm. of the personality. It's the, I can hear anybody talk about any of these albums. I could read reviews of these albums on Amazon or Prague archives, but mm. what keeps me coming back is the personality that's behind the camera. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, I, <laughs> I feel a little bit fuzzy now. <laughs> Isn't that nice? It's definitely <laughs> making me want to uh, up the quality of my own. Oh, it's inspiring. Well, well, Speaking Travis, of- I would say because you're you've written and you're a writer, that doing yeah. a little bit more of that might be the ticket. Might be up, yeah, mm-hmm. might be my ticket. Yeah, and you, you know the great thing own- is because we were talking about like our audiences and how we're kind of tied to what we do because of it. But I basically have almost no audience, which actually yes. kind of affords me a little freedom to <laughs> sort mm-hmm. of change up formats or or even do things a little outside of just, you know, reviewing albums. Like one of the most recent videos on my review channel is a review of a cassette player. (laughs) Amazing. Mm -hmm. An an equipment review. Um, I have a video where I'm reviewing a small uh, Boss Katana guitar amp. It's like yay big and sounds great. So, (laughs) you know. I got a little bit more leeway to kind of do things a little outside of my wheelhouse, test the waters with Mm. certain ideas and Mm. uh, change the format, change my backdrop, change uh, like Matt was talking about how I prepare for my reviews as well. And I think, uh, yeah, that's kind of my game plan right now for, generally improving the quality of my reviews is Mm -hmm. uh, maybe have my thoughts a little bit more uh, written down orderly then I'm not waffling for like 20 minutes in front of a camera (laughs) trying to think of what the hell do I even say here (laughs) (laughs) yeah I'm so jealous and envious of anybody that's able to work off of a script because unfortunately with my dyslexia I can't read anything out loud that I've written down before. Otherwise it just comes out in a massive jumble of words. Uh, And in my early reviews, I tried to do that, but it was so stilted. And so like, I have to keep to the script Mm -hmm. that it just came off as in my mind, disingenuous. I don't know if that's how it actually came off, but that was kind of my idea. So even when I write notes, like it, I always trip over my words and I have to do several takes. Whereas if I have, I will just, keep the ideas of the album itself in my mind as I'm talking about it so I can get to the point. And then in my editing process, I'm like, okay, I said it several different ways. What was the best way I said it? That's the best way. I'm going to cut everything else out and just stick to that one, that one time I made the point (laughs) (laughs) instead of talk around it for several minutes. So yeah, you guys that work from a script, I I applaud you and I wish I could do that as well because it makes it so much easier for me because I, mm-hmm. I edit just based on the audio mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. waves where I'm like, okay, there's oh, a chunk. Yeah. Clip that out. I did the same chunk. thing. Clip that out. Um, yeah, whereas yeah. if I was just going, I would have to like listen. It, was that good? I, don't know. <laughs> I, I would get so like, like I absolutely can ad lib if I need to. It's just that I prefer to have a bit more of a structure in front of me. Like I say, I literally use an auto queue up, so it's just like it's right there. It's scrolling in front of me. So if I, but there are some times where I, I just like think to myself, whilst literally as I'm recording, I'm like, no, that's hot garbage. Don't say that. Idiot. That's just a stupid thing. Why would you say that? And I think, <laughs> I'm going to fix it on the fly. Let's do it as live, you know. <laughs> We're going live. We'll do it live. <laughs> that's it. That's it. And sometimes it works out better. Sometimes I have to just completely start again because there's been like nonstop kids screaming outside or cars going by mm-hmm. ridiculous volumes or the neighbors decide to have like mm-hmm. an interesting time with each other, um, which has happened again. <laughs> That has happened before, and it's very yeah. distressing. I have a very <laughs> sensitive microphone, god damn it. <laughs> Paper thin walls! Yeah. I will, I want to ask, um, in terms of, like, I don't know if it's going to be entertaining for anybody that's watching, but I'm curious about people's audio pickups, because I'm just using the Blue Yeti that I bought, like, 10 years ago, and that's just what I've been using with Audacity. And then oh. I queue up, oh, there it is! Yeah, there the it Blue is. Yeti. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, because yeah. that's my that's what I use. I use um, you know, a camcorder that I got again like 10 years ago, uh, with the little card and I have to Frankenstein because I use Ooh. a Mac. <laughs> so I have the little card that I put into a dongle that I put into another dongle that I have to put oh. into my computer to download <laughs> the the visual file and then upload into the iMovie my audio file and then sync the two up together. Ooh. Um so I clap to sync all the yeah. audio ah! and visuals together uh kind of like yep. the old movies with the clapper yeah 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 um, <laughs> i just but... use my pick i just use my phone like pixel six oh like, man i should my phone my phone's hey, uh, video quality is probably better user. yeah it's probably better than the camcorder i've been using but <laughs> the camcorder because i know it's working off of an sd <clears> card i don't have to worry of like oh is it uploaded properly is it mm. working properly or anything like that it's like no i can record for 12 hours and i don't mind uh, that's a good microphone. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Go. It's pretty basic. So, yeah. um, that's what it needs to do, though, doesn't it? I mean, m- my gear situation is pretty... Because, like, I'm a musician, so obviously I'm going to have sound recording things mm. that are a little more geared towards that kind of thing. Um, mm. I basically have my microphone running into a USB audio interface. I record onto my phone. You record onto the mute oh, button. We've, we've, <laughs> lost, we've lost audio. <laughs> oh no, it's broke. Plugging you. That was the it's most like he's talking, he's talking about, about us. We incredible need to cut timing. It. So, so uh, yeah, we were talking about audio. <laughs> hey. um, yeah, I just record the video aspect onto my phone. Mm-hmm. You know, pretty basic. But then I'm also simultaneously recording audio from my mic, usually into like audacity or something like it doesn't need to be anything particularly fancy and then um when i go into my video editing software which i mean it's like some company called nch or something like that video pad video editor it's like the probably the most uh sketchy video editor you can buy for (laughs) windows but it it does exactly what i need it to do (laughs) which isn't much but it does yeah. what I need it to do. And then I just, you know, put the video and the audio together. I sync up the audio waves and the mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. things best as I can. I also do the clap method. Um, I think, uh, I think if you watched a lot of uh, YouTube videos unedited, they would probably all start <laughs> with a clap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where, where That's is it? Um, I have a, ah, a dog oh, clicker. <gasps> Amazing. Uh, That's actually a pretty really good when, idea when i'm recording and i start fumbling i'll click it so that i have a very astute Ooh. sound clip and i'm like oh just on my voice i can see that's where i need to do some edits that's so nice. a little life hack like for that. you guys just like seven <laughs> bucks at a pet smart that's Very actually good. a really good idea i like that because <laughs> yeah. oh, well. you can keep it concealed and hidden as well and it's very that's it. yeah it. yeah it's so much easier to edit sound than it is to edit mm. video so that's usually how i edit i can right, you see to have a nice nice mic there yeah, it's just, uh, the arm that makes it look official. Ooh, it's fancy. That's cool. Oh, is that a Rhodes? 
looks like a Rhodes. It's a sixty dollar Amazon purchase. Does oh, the job? It does the job. I don't even know where the bloody box is anymore, but <laughs> <laughs> it does what I need it to do, you know. And I use uh, that's a... <laughs> nothing fancy. Well, I mean, the Blue Yeti for me was a big, big upgrade. Um, I used to use a little tiny little crappy clip on and it was awful. But then ah. we started doing our, um, I'm in a, a D&D podcast um, called Quick Plug. Roll Dice Repeat. It's great. Um, Ooh, I'm checking that out. Roll the Dice yeah. Repeat? Roll Dice Repeat. I play dice the, the, repeat. Uh, a, a Warforged Barbarian. I have a great time with them. Um, but I really needed to upgrade my um, audio setup when we started deciding to do that as a podcast. But then it was the same time I was kind of like starting to do these videos a bit more seriously. And I thought, you know what? Kill two birds with one stone. Got the Blue Yeti. And it, it served me perfectly. Like for as long Mine as... Mine exploded. Like, oh, no. Oh, don't, no. Tell me, don't tell me they explode. <laughs> <laughs> like, Have I got a bomb mechanism? in my house? <laughs> but just like the little uh, stand. Like, oh, God. just oh, broke geez. apart. And so... Yeah. Oh, and then I had I other to... issues with it. I won't go on, but it just wow. was buzzing and stuff. So I had to... Okay, so not a recommendation from Matt. That's kind of like the staple of like podcasting. It feels like it's the ubiquitous microphone that you get if you don't have a lot of money like me. Yeah, that's you know? that's <laughs> it. Like... The, the, amount of, the amount of buy-in versus the amount of quality yeah. is like the perfect Venn diagram. That's you it. can that's absolutely exactly. buy better microphones for a lot more money oh, yeah. or you can spend a lot less money for a worse microphone but like for the venn diagram of bang for your buck blue yeti's yeah kind of the best yeah. to go for yeah sponsored by blue yeti give us money <laughs> sure. man money if can... i had that blue yeti that go to roads immediately <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> when you can tell somebody's graduated it's like the sure sm57 <laughs> like arm <laughs> You know, and they're like, yeah, my, my headphones are reasonably fancy. Well, there, um... I mean, <laughs> I mean, um, uh, everybody else in this kind of like video making industry has their you know mics either like just on a stand or like they have like a. Cl I'm like the odd one out that's got like the big boom mic stand mm. because of course I'm <laughs> also gonna be yeah, yeah I'm also yeah, going to be yeah. recording like vocalists or mm. acoustic guitars or what have you. Uh, when I'm doing my own music recording. So just having like a little desk stand doesn't cut it for me, but <laughs> I have some regrets about it because it's such a large component. Uh -huh. Like my living space is not terribly big to begin with. And um, just the amount of floor space it takes up because it's got to uh -huh. have those uh -huh. three legs sticking out. It's a little egregious and mm. uh Maybe yeah. I should get myself a just a desk stand just for you know video recording purposes. Yeah. yeah. Oh boy. I wanna. I'm curious, and I don't know if Brent, you had a transition in mind, but I um, kind of want to go back to like your curiosity about how much music people listen to and how they sift through the. Oh, that's true. Yeah. how much there is out there um to get down to the stuff they care about uh, um, i know for myself like uh, <laughs> this is just a, a site i want to plug album of the year org is where i mm. scour most of the new releases and they just have so much there it's not directly prog centric it's pretty mm. eclectic um mm. but and then Bandcamp, uh kind of going mm. through that as well um, I tend to listen I make, to whatever uh, my friends are buying. Like if I get an email, such oh, as yeah. a friend has bought this, I'm like, oh, I listen to that as well. <laughs> <laughs> Follow people. Yeah. Um, yeah. I make a big playlist, just everything, drop it in on Spotify. And then just during work or any downtime, just go through that, like you've said. And then I, mm -hmm. I pull individual songs into a like highlight playlist for each month. Mm -hmm. And then the way that I'll remind myself of what albums to dig into is go back to that playlist and see those individual tracks that that stood out. And then I dig further in from there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anyone's yeah. similar, if you have other things. I, going. I kind of work similarly like that. Like the, the main place where I sort of go to like figure out what I want to try listening to is Sputnik Music. I, I subscribe religiously to Sputnik Music. They're a fantastic source, not just prog, but basically bit of everything really but i tend to sort of be like new releases and the people like usable rate and such forth blah 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 
And as a general rule, if something gets like a 3.8 out of 5 or higher, I'm, I'll am i probably give it a cursory listen. If it's got a 4.0 or higher, I will definitely give it a listen, regardless of genre. And I have discovered so, so much music doing that. That is literally how I found out about the Dodd Heimsgard record. It's how I found out about the Dozer mm -hmm. record. And they are currently like the top one and two spots of the year at the moment. So mm -hmm. I I've come to trust and rely on the users of Sputnik Music quite a lot. It's not like the only thing that I'll check or like I will take it as gospel because there are still some bands on the Sputnik which they love and I still don't care for. I still can't mm -hmm. get into Swans. I will keep <laughs> trying. I will always keep trying. This new record. This new record. Yeah. I'm I'm go I am going to listen to it when it comes out. I am going to listen to it because I, I want to get it. I really do. I genuinely yeah. want to get Swans. Um, yeah. But like as a general rule, like if they are into something, there's a pretty good indication that it's going to be, you know, it's going to be good. I try not to um, uh, rate your music. I don't really much care for, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Because um, they hate everything. Um, <laughs> it feels <laughs> like, ah, this is garbage. This isn't Kid A or OK Computer. Throw it in the bin. You know, and it's like, yeah. okay. It just feels yeah, like it's, there's a lot of snobbery, you know. And I'm just well, like, for me, the only and I this is coming from somebody that religiously uses Prog Archives. For me, the rate your music interface, I just can't get over. Yes, I, um, I, and that's the only reason why I created accounts maybe about ten years ago, um, and I started using it. But it's just the the user interface. I just I can't get I just can't get into it. I you know mm -hmm. I need I need just a little just color. Give me yeah, some color. A bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, <laughs> you know? a little bit too bare for me, but yeah, just a little. And I get why it's like that, but yeah. like, come on, guys, just yeah, it's a little, little uh, primary colors, anything. <laughs> you need the prog mural of characters. <laughs> that's it. That's it. You know, you've got the that's little it, gentle yeah. giant guy hanging in the back and going, hello. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's i mean thinking about the root of the question of like how do i how do we shift through so much uh and then kind of decide like what am i going to spend my time with um the way that i listen to music is like i i very rare like i used to make playlists religiously um and take tracks that i love and throw them into a playlist but because i'm listening more and more specifically to albums as a whole um I will just write a list of the records that I need to keep in my roster. Otherwise I, I don't want to get too deviated. So I have three lists right now, just handwritten lists of like new albums to check out, which on a little piece of paper here, um, nothing to spoil uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> albums to check out albums to review um, and then albums to keep my eyes open for. And then I will swap in and out and make new lists. Uh, and this will just kind of help me keep my eyes on the prize of like what albums to look at, which albums to really go deep into reviewing. Cause um, you know, I've got two Dungeons and Dragons games a week, which happens on zoom and I'm listening to music while that's happening. So those are the albums that I want to check out. And if anything stands out to me during those listens, cause I'm doing something else, then I'll move those over to the albums to review. Uh, and that's when I go on my mental health walks where I just need to get outside and be one with nature. I'll wear my good headphones. Um, and I'll also listen to them when I'm at the gym. Uh, Cause you know, when I'm at the gym, I'm in that like zone mode. Um, and that's where I'll get into like the real heavy death metal, you know, the really intense stuff. Um, Cause as much fun as I love listening to, you know, like ghost, uh, <laughs> I want something a little bit more. Uh, so yeah. And I guess like Spotify is making zero money off of me uh, because of how much I listen to it. Like I, I sleep <laughs> listening to other music. Like that's another way that I'll like all last year I was listening to Beethoven while I was sleeping. So um, that's how I'm able to kind of like really structure my time throughout my day. Cause there isn't really any moment when I'm not listening to music. Um, even when I'm driving, I'm listening uh, playing video games in my downtime, I'm listening to music, which is why all games should come with subtitles uh, <laughs> instead of not having any subtitles in their like voice moments, like in their cutscenes. Yep, yep. Nothing annoys me more than having to pause the game, pause my music, turn up the volume, then watch and <laughs> like actually take in. Um, so that's my system, and it seems to be working pretty well so far. That's how I'm able to get like one video out a day for a while. Oh. Um, that's yeah. 
Like, do you, are uh, you able to listen while you work? Too? Yes. Yeah, even on like my meetings. Able to work well while you're listening. (laughs) (laughs) You'll have to ask my clients if you ask my clients about that. I keep getting these little bits of song lyrics. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely think I'm lucky in that my job allows me to listen to music pretty regularly. Um, Mm. Sometimes, even if uh, I'm in a client's home and working away and there's nobody home i might even be working solo Mm -hmm. then that's just a perfect opportunity for me to just pop a bluetooth speaker out crank the tunes and uh yeah but for me like it's mostly uh my commute to and from work Mm -hmm. i have a a reliable hour and a half a day that i'm on a bus with nothing better to do nobody to chat with just my yeah. headphones on enjoying whatever music i want to listen to that day mm-hmm. and i think like, yeah. my system for like how do i sift through like releases that i want to listen to or new releases i'm very lazy about this um you know i i use a lot of spotify's own algorithm to sort of direct me a bit you know there's mm-hmm. a lot of times where my spotify homepage will have hey here's a new release from a band you like um and oftentimes like when i'm picking whatever song i want to listen to because i'm one of those people who i can never put anything on shuffle i can't let anything be automatic about my music listening i go through like albums and playlists and deliberately choose songs so if i go to an Mm -hmm. artist and you know at the bottom they always have fans also like such and such mm-hmm. artist and mm-hmm. that's been a good way for me to sort of like check out some bands that maybe i wouldn't have otherwise wanted to listen to before like uh, over the last few uh, weeks i've been kind of on a bit of a kick for like 80s metal you mm-hmm. know like the cheesiest stuff like uh this aldo nova record behind me or like a uh, winger <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know? hell yeah hell you know, yeah it's, new record gotta, coming but um, I've also been kind of listening to some of like the early progressive metal stuff that maybe I never really thought about, like Gamma Ray or mm-hmm. Pagan's Mind, uh, you know, stuff like that. The early Shadow Gallery, Psychotic Waltz. And, you know, those are all bands whose names I know, but it's not until I'm like on Spotify and going through like what... Um, you know fans of the artists i'm currently listening to like and then i see that name go ah okay click on that let's listen to Mm -hmm. let's see what they gotta say and Mm -hmm. um that's been a pretty valuable tool for me lately just to sort of branch out a bit because i know like with my own personal listening habits i tend to be very narrow i tend to go a lot for what's already like my favorites and I, I don't really branch out too much because like when I'm listening to music for my own enjoyment, I'm listening to it for my enjoyment, for comfort's sake. Right. So it, it does take a bit for me to get out of the comfort zone enough to get like, say, a new release to review it or maybe look back at some older releases that I've missed or mm-hmm. just discovering new bands altogether. But uh the advent of streaming has made that process a lot easier for me. So yeah, it's, it's interesting thinking about that. Cause I've noticed one of the things that I'm trying to work against now is <laughs> while I'm on Spotify and I see new artists, if they don't have an album that was released this year, I will almost write them off immediately. Cause I'm like, I don't have time to listen to something I'm like that, that, which is, well. yeah. which is a shame. Cause I'm like, Oh, it was released in 2021. Mm. I still want to give my attention mm. to it, but I've got 12 other albums that was released this month that need, I need to review yeah. Yeah. where even at the beginning of this year, I didn't review a single, th- like didn't listen to a new album. I wanted to listen to the things that I loved. You know, I spent all of January listening to Emerson, like and Palmer and gentle giant. Cause I'm like, I haven't heard these guys in two years. Cause I spent all of my waking hours listening to new music. So it's something I'm trying to like, just listen to music for music's sake, mm-hmm. instead of like, how can I monetize this? How can I yeah. spend my time 
listening no, to this it. album, you know, I mean, and it's kind of kicking my pants now. I mean, even <laughs> as I'm talking to you guys, I'm listening to the new Fires in the Distant album, you know, thinking, okay, so what do I want to say about this? <laughs> like, I'm doing that right now. <laughs> that right was now. one of the, the, it was a bit of an aspect for me that got me quitting reviewing for Ultimate Guitar is mm-hmm. it really did start to feel a bit like, uh, the very task of listening to music was starting to become a bit of a chore. Mm. I think uh, taking some time away from ulti- Ultimate Guitar has been very beneficial to me in that aspect is now I'm really starting to sink back into listening to music for the sake of enjoying it. And uh, and then, you know, it starts to get the gears turning in your head of, uh, well, here's a new release from a band I like. Let's get into review mode. Yeah, yeah. Oh, quick See. random segue, actually, just as a random thought. Um, Travis, you mentioned about Pagan's Mind earlier. And oh. so, because my brain does what my brain does, and I watched uh, Notes' review earlier today of Tritop and uh, talking about the like the, the musical plagiarism side of things. <laughs> have y'all ever heard Pagan's Mind's version of Learning to Live? I have um, not. I've, I will. I've... I, I will saw dig it somebody out. reference I will dig it, it out. on Twitter once, and I it's, should have. It's I think so I, ridiculously I think I did. similar that they literally include the lyrics of confidence and self control. Oh, it's boy. in the exact same fashion. They're not even like, trying anymore. I like, will find it. I will find it and drop I, it you two in a DM because it's hysterical I, when you. I, I think I think you actually mentioned it in our last uh, roundtable. That's I, where I, I remember that from because so funny. I mentioned either. something about writing a song way yeah. back in the day yeah. that was just essentially yeah. a change of seasons <laughs> yeah because we were we were talking about the new crownlands and yeah. I, uh, no, 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 three no. three big albums like the new mm. um epoch root uh album delusion mm. the three uh, starts off the album with three of the best written uh tracks this year mm. but the entire time i'm like this is just Casey Crescenza, like this is just basically yeah. this is just the Deer Hunter. Why? Yeah, I, I would much rather listen to Act Four, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but again, like uh, anyway, it's a little bugaboo that I'm noticing more and more and more now, and I'd like to think it's not just because I'm exposed to a lot more music. I, like, God, these bands sound so much better when they're when they're just being themselves. Being themselves, yeah. No, you know, it's kind of like even... the teenager that comes into school trying to be somebody else yeah, it's yeah. Like, just I be like yourself you, who you are that's like it. you don't that's need it. to be joey the jock or christina the prep you can be i don't know whoever you want to be like as long as that's you yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. anyway anyway that's okay. why I'm I, I'm fine. that's why physical is is really nice because it literally slows you down like vinyl is yes. so inconvenient yeah <laughs> that's honestly since it's I worth it. Been, yeah i mean that's obviously not my vinyl collection back there in case in, in case everybody's wondering that's the picture from the internet um but i have like st- i know shocking right um i have started collecting vinyl and i do feel that 100 percent. it feels like it's an event you know streaming oh, you just mm-hmm. click go boom whatever cd stick it in click boom go whatever the vinyl feels more intimate it feels more personal like it's yeah big yeah. it's huge think... it's unwieldy there's an involved process and, and it, it connects you to the music it forces you to slow down it forces you to yeah. think and really feel about yeah. what you're listening to Stephen wilson was talking about that with the rise of the mp3 player mm. um you know, now he was talking, you know, the move away from physical, including CDs and tapes and whatnot. And I, I agree, but like, yeah, the physical media, whether you listen to it through a tape or a CD or an eight track or whatever, you're right. It slows you down mm. and it's almost like a one-on-one connection rather than hitting play off of Spotify and looking at the little icon for the, you know, the album itself. Mm. Um, yeah, I it's a little bit more of an intimate one-on-one. Yeah. Like to me, having the tangible record or the CD with the booklet and stuff is so much rewarding than just like you said, Mike. Mm. Your little mm-hmm. how is that? You know. Can I? I want to shout out the Japanese and the Korean pop movement because they know how to package their music. Yeah. Like if you look at any <laughs> J-pop or K-pop package, like uh, there's like something about it. Like like here, like. <laughs> So it's not it's not J-pop or K-pop, but like Marillion's Happiness is the Road, right? Like this is how you package a CD or an album, right? Like each album itself is a, its own little book. It's an intimate process between me and the record. 
It's got its own little book fold out thing. Like it's an experience. And yeah. I feel like with streaming sites as convenient and I will praise the high heavens for streaming, but we're losing that tactile. I want to run. Mm. And <laughs> sadly, it makes, me, it makes me buy it. I spent like 60 bucks on this and I would happily do it again. Exactly. Uh, I think even sadly, like some of that tactile experience uh, when you do find sources for it nowadays, like CD is definitely going the way of uh, vinyl and cassettes like 10, 20 years ago were um, because like I've ordered a few CDs from artists from say Bandcamp, uh, including um, one from our very own friend, uh, Grace Hayhurst. And I mean, mm -hmm. it's packaged in just like the most basic cardboard slip case. There's no lyrics. There's like the album artwork track listing mm -hmm. uh some credits but there's not really much and i'm starting to notice that's a bit of a trend when you buy a cd like yeah. uh one of my favorite cd packages is very similar to uh your marillion one it's pink floyd's pulse and mm -hmm. um yeah. you know it's the same thing it's got that like slip case and you pull it out and there's the book with like the really colorful photos and the cds are like packaged in the covers of the book itself um another similar one for me was um cynics traced in air very similar kind of package to that uh but it also came with like a big fold-out poster um you know and i think like there's something that's being lost about the tactile experience of albums nowadays that especially for like smaller artists like i know for myself if i were to release an album on physical media i would want the packaging to be you know something that made you feel like it was worth the cost but mm -hmm. you know as we all know the cost of things is going up nowadays so you know the best economy? that i can in this economy <laughs> the best i can hope for is a simple cardboard slip case mm -hmm. which but yeah, like anything kind of anything is better than nothing at this point yeah know? and i mean I think it's even starting to affect vinyl a bit because I've also ordered several vinyl records from uh, Sheet Happens Publishing, which I always mm -hmm. love to shout out for their gorgeous tab books. But, uh, and their records are kind of similar. It's like, there's not really a whole lot going on. You pull out the the sleeve and there's, it's just a basic black sleeve. There's nothing mm -hmm. written on it. Like, I want to see more like, put the lyrics on things, yeah. put the credits mm. have like, I I'm one of those people that actually loves to read like the thank you notes. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Andy Tillerson's um, happiness. Uh, no, the, the not as good as the book um, had this fantastic thank you where they, where he thanked just the first word, like the first name of different bands. So it's like, thank you, Peter, Tony, oh. um, Phil, Steve, uh, and you're trying to figure out what band he's talking about mm. and like halfway through the list he's like this is a fun game isn't it and then he continues <laughs> on um so like stuff like that it's like and, come and, on guys like and then like the simple, little simple little things like that little in jokes like how rush in like their later days always had like the special letter of this album is omega yeah. or like <laughs> or uh i know of um fate's warning uh thanked dream theater in the liner notes for uh their album parallels but they spelled dream theater wrong so when dream theater released images and words uh they thanked fate's warning but then they spelled uh, fate's warning wrong on purpose <laughs> oh, that's right. it's a little little between band banter oh. like you don't oh, get yeah. that in like music nowadays like the physical releases mm, yeah i'm like doesn't half feel of... like you have that half of tools records wouldn't be what they are without the actual physical process. Like the flip, the transparent yeah. flip book from lateralis, the, yeah. the think, like moving thing from, um, I think that's almost why Emma? I couldn't really get into fear inoculum too much because the physical package for it was so exclusive. Yeah. And I've got like, it and it's brilliant. It's like a whole movie 3d movie yeah. thing. That's crazy. Yeah. But, but of know. course, like it, it wasn't just like a CD you could pop down to Walmart and buy for 20 bucks. Like, no, it's like 80 bucks. $80 package. <laughs> yeah. And they only made a limited there. number of them. Yeah. 
you need you need like a USB connecting piece to recharge it every once in a while because it runs on batteries. So, <laughs> well, I mentioned that uh, Pink Floyd album Pulse, and I don't have an original pressing of it where they actually had like a little uh, LED in the spine that oh, um, mm-hmm. would like yep. go off like a heartbeat. <laughs> oh, that's fun! And it, they yeah. actually had instructions on how to change the battery in it. <laughs> I think it was just like yeah. A let's see. So. I've got my uh, there it is, my pure inoculum beast. Oh, very nice. And let's see here. Yeah, it won't show because it's not there. But like you've got oh, a little wow, free. That's there's... amazing. <laughs> and it actually comes. There's the little USB thing. That oh my plug goodness! It into. What? Yeah. <laughs> oh man, oh, she's so crazy. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So right in the slip card, you got the little. What? boy that you have to plug it into <laughs> wow so again you don't get this with streaming oh my god so cool i mean the whole point of this whole video is like how we listen to music and mm. you know mm-hmm. the, yeah this is a really good topic we're touching on like the physical aspect of music because yeah um i do find that sometimes having the physical music slows you down a bit and the other thing i find with it too um, especially um, like when I've got my Walkman and like a handful of cassette tapes, uh, having a bit of a limited choice makes it easier to kind of know what you want to listen to. Cause mm-hmm. like I could spend hours scrolling through Spotify or, you know, and, and not listen to anything that particularly tickles my fancy. But, like, if I've got, like, 10 cassette tapes with me, and that's a lot for cassette tapes because they're bigger than people mm-hmm. remember. But, yep. like, if I've got a handful of them with me, it's like, well, do I want to listen to Ozzy Osbourne or do I want to listen to Megadeth? Or <laughs> I, I have a copy of Haken's uh, The Mountain. Maybe I want to listen to that <laughs> today. Or how about some <laughs> Joe Satriani? Well, th- that's all my choices. <laughs> no. You know, uh, yeah. I do tend to get a little bit of option paralysis with uh, modern <laughs> streaming no, I get options. That, so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's a. Of... Go ahead, Nathan. Uh, that reminds me of my transition back when I was like, I had the Discman, and then when an iPod came out, it was like revolutionary at the oh. time, and like I could have my <laughs> whole library in one little device. It was cool. Yeah, but I do think it does sacrifice some of that, like connection to like oh, a does. little cd case of like 20 cd mm-hmm. to listen to while i was out and about and i think that made me more connected like i would really carefully which yeah. cds am i putting in there today and you ended and up appreciating the individual discs so much more didn't you mm-hmm. yeah and you also have like hard. tactile memory like the more mm-hmm. senses that are involved i feel like the more mm-hmm. it sticks with you yeah 100%. so this all yeah. this all kind of comes around i feel like progressive music is like it by its very nature is a delayed gratification sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Like Mm -hmm. you, you spend time with it, you soak it in and you know that the reward at the end is going to be better than the quick dopamine hit that you could get on TikTok or or wherever Instagram. So Mm -hmm. like physical Mm -hmm. format only delays that further, but you have to like tell yourself, okay, I'm not in the social, I'm not in the conversation. I'm not putting out a video and getting that quick rush that comes with, you know, that sort of world Mm -hmm. or whatever, you know, fast gratification you can get, but this is going to be worth it. And then it's like this greater sense of satisfaction at the end. Like you have to work for it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that I, part of my problem with music and determining what, what to listen to and how to manage my time is just, I, I'm always constantly chasing this, like, oh, I got to find the next mm-hmm. best album. I got to find the next cool band that I don't know about. And I think it neglects some of the classics that I already love and enjoy. And I don't give as much time to them because my listening time is really limited. Mm-hmm. And so I find myself just listening to a bunch of new stuff. And the percentage is lower of stuff that just really sticks with me. Where if I really focused on like the physical products that I have, the like bands that I've fallen in love with it would probably be a higher percentage of just enjoyable time and I like really gain better appreciation than just this quick shot like okay move on to the next thing move on to the next Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. I often get into I I find myself in that spiral a little bit when I find myself you you guys all determine 90% of what I listen to 
Oh. <laughs> I'll hear an old Neil no pressure, Young. <laughs> but then I'll hear an old Neil Young song on the radio at work or something, and then I have to go into my collection and grab it. And then I start listening to the album and I start going down his discography, or I start rating it in my head. Well, I might as well write it down, maybe do a review on it. I've got probably a whole book mm -hmm. of review ideas that I could be doing, but I just don't get to it. <laughs> yeah, and that becomes yeah, problematic. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly does. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Oh boy. Oh, well, I need to leave soon, but this has been a brilliant and fantastic conversation. Yeah, everybody. This has been yes. really enjoyed it. It's been fantastic tonight. Well, this yeah. afternoon for you, tonight for me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Time is owns a mad, you know. Yeah. Crazy. What a, what a concept. What a concept. Well, it's for you guys that I actually I there we go. I plugged it in. Ooh, oh, it's nice. It's slowly. <laughs> just for you cool. guys. That's cool. <laughs> awesome. All righty. Well, I guess until next time, everybody, take care as always and look out for each other and we'll see each other in the next video. Sounds yeah. great. Thanks right. again, guys. Hey, guys. Everybody watching. watching. Take everybody. care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>